uh, session. This is the last weekend of this course, and we're going to start out by looking at Google Maps to begin with. Um, just in case you haven't heard my complaining prior to starting this, uh, this right now, if you just came in, I hate Google Maps. <laughs> it doesn't work well. It's not going to work well for you either, well, unless you're extremely lucky. I, I, I spent maybe about three days trying to get my emulator to work. It doesn't work. So I tried another three days trying to get my phone to work with it. Doesn't work. So um, as some people have ventured out into then I know it works through WebView because I have, was able to get it working through a WebView. The map view does not work for me. Um, it might work for you, hopefully. Not a strong, pro, not a strong supporter of the Google services or Google Play. It's buggy. So don't complain or don't don't complain. Yeah, don't. I should stop complaining. So I'm going to do this lecture first, so I can stop complaining for the rest of the day. Uh, but in your assignments, if I can't test it, don't worry about it not working on your computer. Because if I if it won't work for you, it's not going to work for me. It's not going to work. If it works for you, it's still not going to work for me. Which means I'm going to look at the assignments, look at the code, and just eyeball it. I can't run anything. It doesn't work. So it's not like it's a major part of it. And in fact, if you don't want it to get it to work, don't worry about it. Just do the other parts of the assignment and skip the map stuff if that's a concern for you. It's better to see if you can try to get it to work. Some people can get it to work. But the older version of the map API, much more reliable, much better, works better. I did happen to find, however, a technique that worked once. I loaded it up and it actually worked one time. And then after that, it keeps bombing out. It keeps crashing on me. So if you follow this tutorial, it might actually work one time. <laughs> We're going to go through it and see how it's supposed to work. And then we'll see. So at least you know whether you're doing it correctly or not correctly. But I mean, seriously, it's no reflection upon your programming skill if you cannot get this to work, because then you're probably average. I mean, or above average, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> those people who can get it to work are extremely lucky, I think. So anyway, enough of that stuff. Uh, let's take a look to see where this is located. I put this, I updated, uh, I updated the, the website for this weekend. So we are looking at spring 2013, and I've got the um, Android applica uh, phone application development directory. And then under the tutorials, I believe this one's called Map 2. Um, it might be actually on the bottom. Uh, here it is, Map 2 Lecture, Map 2 Solution. I also put down this little best practices. So we're going to go over this today, too. Talk about the final exam. So the, the way this is going to work <coughs> is we're going to spend most of today reviewing a little bit, going over the rest of it, like the maps, location services, uh, notifications. Um, I have a little bit of thing on threads, which you might find actually kind of interesting, especially if you're into this Java class, because it applies towards Android and non-Android. It's multi-thread stuff. It's basically performance, uh, make your app run faster, make your app not crash kind of thing today. Um, and then we'll have a little bit of, um, I don't want to call it review, but a little bit of a recap in the afternoon today about what to study for for the final. I'm going to try and let you out a little bit earlier today, about 4 o'clock-ish or so, um, so you can have the evening. Um, if you've been doing the assignments, if you've been attending the class, you should be able to do just fine on the final. It's all about, there's no programming questions where you don't have to write any co source code. There are approximately 25 multiple choice questions, and then there's 15 short answer, but it's not short answer, it's one or two words. As an example, what programming language is used to, pro this is not one of the questions, but as an example, what programming language is used to program Android? And you'd write Java. <laughs> so the answers to these questions are like one or two words. But if you can't remember, he's like, a Java-like language, or <laughs> I don't know, you can, you can, it's not like one word is the right word. Like you can describe it any way you want, you know. As an example, you know, what language is used for the UI and for strings and for all of most of the resources that are available? XML. <laughs> but if you can't remember XML, you could put in there a language very similar to HTML, but it's used for data markup instead of text. <laughs> Or something, you know. So, but what I'm looking for is XML. I mean, if that were the question, but that question is not on that either. But, uh, but if you think about it, and uh, I'll give you some more information later. But you want to know something about, let's say, the app lifecycle. You know, the on create. <laughs> you, know? 
you know, you want to you want to be able to have some familiarity with building apps on the Android platform because those are what the questions are about. You know, like <coughs> the string.h XML file that's used to hold strings. You know, the purpose of that. Oh, the purpose of let's say, for example, the onCreate method. You know, the on resume, um, the concepts of programming in the environment. If you've written an Android app before, you can answer these questions. If you've never written an Android app, you have no idea what Android's all about, you just don't know anything, and you haven't been attending the course, then you're going to have a problem with it. So it's meant to be very straightforward, very easy, very kind of, you know, not so challenging. <laughs> it's basically testing whether or not you've been sitting here listening or whether or not you've been at home and having somebody else write your attendance for you. <laughs> so, questions before we get started. But here's where I wanted to, I went to this website to show you. This is uh, some of the tutorials that we'll be working. We already did the rotation stuff last time, but we'll be doing the map stuff. And uh, I have a couple widget things and, oh, I don't know, some thread stuff. I'll probably do the thread stuff next. So today's about... Um, reviewing and filling in some more of the advanced topics. So it's not what I'd call a, it's not as tough as the first weekend, not as tough as the second weekend. Although the interesting thing is in the first weekend we didn't really cover that much, but people thought it was the hardest. And then the second weekend we covered a lot of stuff, but people thought oh, it was easier. Today is going to be like a breeze. You'll be like, you didn't cover anything. <laughs> but we're actually covering a lot of stuff, which is kind of interesting. So it means you're adapting to it. It means you're absorbing some of it. It it should get easier. You know, it should. Like I was saying on the first weekend, the hardest part is getting familiar with the platform, the emulators. The hardest thing, actually, for Android is getting the software installed. Once you have everything installed and working and running, then that's easy. The programming part's easy, which is kind of the opposite for iPhone and iOS. That's already installed for you. You just download Xcode. But the hardest part is learning how to program in it, so it's, it's kind of the opposite. All right, let's talk about maps. <coughs> so maps, Google Maps library requires version 2.5 or above. I've discovered, actually, the one time I did get this to work, it was on a four point of, and above. It was on an ice cream. Uh, and I had to borrow somebody's, because I don't have a device that was purchased in the last year. You have to have, like, a brand new tablet or a brand new phone or something right off the market with four point and above. <laughs> in order for this to actually work. If you don't have that, forget it. Although it does say that it works and requires three point above, that's a that's not necessarily correct. <laughs> I'd almost change it. According to the Android people, they say four they say three and above. I'm thinking four and above actually, because the three devices I've tried on three I've actually which is kind of kind of a tongue twister I've tried three devices that had three point something and above none of them worked so do you hear an interesting noise oh it's the fan oh it's your computer <laughs> I'm sorry okay I'm acclimating back into this yeah I forgot your computer <laughs> do you hear a noise oh it's my computer all right <clears throat> so the uh, API library changed, it changed in it uh, as of April actually, this is so very current, as of April the uh, older ones don't work anymore, which is kind of interesting, uh, which is why there's a, t there's a direct tie to an internet connectivity with this as well because it has to go verify the app key, which you think makes it run a little bit slower, but it doesn't. Why they come through, why, you know, this is probably a philosophical question, but why they bother Linking this to a key is beyond me. What security problem could there possibly be with a map, mapping program, especially when they allow location services to go everywhere? I don't understand why in the world they make it so difficult. Anyway, so let me get back to the core of this. Um, so it requires a version 2.5 or above of the Google Maps library, which might be a problem right there. In the next screen, you're going to see where you have to download stuff. <coughs> and... Uh, the Google Maps library allows you to add Google Maps to your applications, um, which is pretty much all it's used for um, on the application level. There are other things in it, however, um, but they're not as popular as the mapping features. It requires 3.x, 3.3 plus, uh, to work on uh, devices with Google Play services. Although I have Google Play services installed on my 2.0 device, 2.3 device, and uh, the Google Play services works, but the map features don't work, so it's kind of interesting. So what we're going to cover is the configuration that's required to use the map keys, and uh, in the best of all worlds, hopefully this will work for you. 
So the one thing you're going to want to do if you haven't done it yet and you're still thinking about doing it is uh, download the Google Play services. How are you going to get that? You're going to go into the IDE, go into the Android SDK window and select Google Play services from the, under the extras. So if I look at my uh, Android, which I have up here. Oh, great. Let's just shut this one for a second. Go into the, to the window, <coughs> SDK manager. And uh, it used to be listed under each one of the APIs. Now it's in the extras folder. They moved it, actually. If I go down uh, to the uh, bottom of the screen here, under the extras folder, I see Google Play Services. I have it installed. This is what it's talking about. It's not listed under any of the other APIs like it used to be. It used to be listed under... Um, Basically, it used to be listed under here, under Google APIs for the older version. But another thing you're going to want to do to, in order to test the maps while you're doing this, if you want to do this, start this stuff, get this working, and then while, while you're doing that, you can listen to me talk. Download these Google Play services. Oh, there's an update. I'm not going to install this update. Apparently, there's an update now <laughs> from here. It's not too long ago, probably because I complained too much. Um, this is probably this updates the reason why it doesn't work on my computer. Who knows? But uh, that's the one thing you're going to want to do <clears throat> in order to use that. The other thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have emulator support. So pick something three point or above. I'd go four above. So if you come up here, um, maybe this one's not installed, but you want to install the Google APIs. The reason why you want the Google API installed for one of your Android versions. This is uh, API 17. You can go back down to 16. I think I have 16 and 4.1.2 is installed. Here you can see. The reason why you want to install the Google APIs is because you need a Google emulator, a Google API supported emulator in order to run the maps. So if you're going to take the emulator route, and it will not work in the VirtualBox emulator that I put up for you, but if you go into here and go into Android Virtual Device Manager, you're going to need one of these guys set up. One of these guys here is using the Google Target API. So if I come in here to edit this, I can see from my list, you're not going to see this in your list until you've installed it. So you're also going to have to, because you can't run the Google Maps stuff on a regular emulator, you have to use the Google API emulator support. So that's another problem with it right there. So in here I have uh, this one was which uh, level 13. I've never tried the Google TV add-on. I don't even, I don't own the device or have never tested with it, but it's the Google APIs. So that's the emulator you're going to want to run the project on eventually um, when you go ahead to test it. So you're not going to get this option in here until you uh, download it from the <coughs> download it from the SDK manager. That's how you're going to get that option to show up. So if you want to start the download and do that right now, if you're going to try and test it, that's, that's a good, good thing to start working at. So. OK, so let's go take a look at how this is supposed to work. And uh, oh yeah, I brought that screen back up. So yeah, this is the option here that's going to give it. You only need it once one, for one of the API levels. And then when you build your project, make sure you build it for that API. Because if you build it for a different API level, it's not going to work. Even though it won't give you an error message, it still won't work. The API level has to match the Google API emulator level. <laughs> so that may be another problem why it doesn't work. I'm sorry? Um, I did it for a lower one. I did it for a API level 16. 17 is a probably more current. 17 is the 4.22. Theoretically, it's supposed to work all the way back to uh, 12, I think, or something, or 11. Here's 11, 11 or above. Go high. The higher you go, probably the more reliable your uh, your system's going to work, probably. But my emulators, I cannot get the 4.2 to run on my computer. It just doesn't work. Well, actually, it did work one time. It took an hour and 15 minutes for the emulator to load, and then about another 20 minutes for the project to install itself into the emulator and then it crashed. <laughs> so 
I'm not a fan of the Google emulators either, <laughs> so, as you can possibly tell by the tone of my voice. <laughs> so, anyway, this uh, Google Play services is nothing but a source of aggravation. <laughs> right, so, back to the concept here. Uh, so this is the screenshot showing you the Google Play services from the extras folder. Make sure you get that downloaded. And then we're going to, actually, let's just show you how to do this. So we're going to create a new project, and I'll just go ahead and run through this, actually, because there's not too many steps. And uh, we're going to call the project Android. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to call the project. It doesn't really matter what we call the project, but we're going to essentially choose a blank application, create a blank app uh, activity for it, ensure that you're using the latest version of the version 2 of the Google Play services, make sure you have that installed. So let's go ahead and just create it, and we'll show you how to actually put the app together, uh, whether or not you're going to do this or not. Again, as I was mentioning before, may or may not work for you. So, file new Android application. <coughs> actually, I'm going to kind of close this stuff here. This is a different sort of way of doing it. I'm going to close these projects I have open here. I was testing some stuff out earlier today. So, file new. And then uh, down into the other here, I'm going to go Android application project next. I'm going to call this out here uh, my maps. And uh, it doesn't really matter, I'll just leave it on. And yeah, here, I'll change this here. Okay, yeah, so here I think I'm going to use uh, Android 16. Because I have a 4.1, I have the Google emulator installed for 4.1, so I'm going to put it on the 16 here and compile it with 16. 4.1, only because I did that with my uh, with my Google Play services, and the Google a APIs are installed for level 16. And then you just don't want to make it too low, like below 3.0, otherwise it's not going to work at all. So blank activity is what I'm going to select, and I'm just going to press finish here. So now I just have a regular, ordinary uh, app that I've started. So let's take a look here and see how we're supposed to do it. Add the Google Play Services project into your Eclipse workspace. Well, this is what I did. I put it into a separate project. This is the only way I could get it to work, actually, and then linked it to the project, which is kind of interesting. So click on uh, click File, Import, and then select Android Existing Android Code into Workspace. And I believe I have a... I have a uh, what I'm doing is I'm adding a project in, and uh, I'm going to put it into a separate, so I'm going to add the Google Play Services project into the Eclipse workspace, and then I'm going to link my project to the Eclipse project that I've just added in here, rather than having, because if you do it this way, then you can just add it to every one of your projects without having to actually put it into the project. So we're going to add the project, so go ahead and click, and this is probably the more universal way of doing it. Um, which actually worked for me one time. So click on uh, File, so File, Import, Select Android. So if I go up here, and I go, let's just close this one for a second here. File, Import, and then Existing Android Code into Workspace. Uh, let's see what I have out here. I want Existing Android Code into Workspace, so that's the option that I want. And then I'm going to browse, and I'm going to select the Android folder in my extras folder. Because remember, you have to have the API downloaded, you know, the little extras thing I showed you a few minutes ago. That has to be downloaded already in order for it to exist. So I believe I should be able to do it quite easily now, because mine was downloaded. If I browse to, you know, it doesn't keep, uh, oh yeah, look at that, it does keep the directory for me. My system is going to have it in lib projects, and it's going to be part of, uh, let's take a look here. This is where you're going to find it. You're going to find it in the Android SDK folder, wherever it, that happens to be, in the extra subfolder, which is interesting because it matches the SDK manager download screen. Google, Google Play Services, lib project, Google Play Services underscore lib. So when I do that, what I'm going to do is, I've already got this here selected from users, vHackers is where I have it installed. This is going to be different on your system. You can click the Browse button and do it this way. 
where you can pick the location, but you want to find that extra subfolder within lib projects because that's what we downloaded. So we see in here, mine ended up being in my home directory, and then I have the Android SDK folder, and then we have the extra subfolder. And then we're finding Google, Google Play Services, lib project, Google Play Services.lib. And then we have a project here. Um, looks like I already have the project installed here. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to continue with this. Instead, I'll show you this screen here. Because when I click, I already have the project created. It's only going to allow you to do it once. So it's already imported. And it's imported right here, actually. If I look at my folder list, I see it imported right here, which is why I'm not going to be able to add it again. But what you want to do is click on this little button here. And then um, take a look out. If you can't find it here, my best advice is to take a look out in your subfolder. If I go to my home directory, which is where mine is, and mine is in users of vHacker Android SDKs, then I have, yeah, same folder that you've installed the SDK. You'll see an extras folder. You have to have it downloaded. Okay, so go into your Android SDK folder and click on the extra subfolder of that, and then you'll see Google in there. And inside Google, you'll see Google Play Services. Then there's something wrong with your download. <laughs> Are you going into lib projects, library projects, and you don't have this guy in here? Is it um, marked hidden or anything? Is it a? Is it has regular? But what you're saying is in this window here. It's not showing up underneath it. Do you have it added already? No. Um, do you have uh, what SDK version did you install it for? The same. Yeah. Unfortunately, well, first of all, I'm not a very strong supporter of this to begin with, but unfortunately I'd say it's probably a bug. And maybe it has something to do with the location, and it's maybe blocked under a user profile or something. You might, might have better luck if you move it out, but I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, I wouldn't bother with this. I mean, for, unless you really want to get it to work, I'd relocate it maybe to a different folder. I don't know. It could be that it doesn't have access to it. It should find it. If you put this path in here correctly, it should find the project if the project is actually downloaded. It's one of those external projects that gets downloaded with that extras bundle. Yeah. Well, on my system, it's already in, so it's not going to let me do it twice. That's my problem here. When I click on it, it goes minus because I already have it. So it's, uh, I would almost venture to say uh, that. Uh, it won't let you select it? Does it show it in the window? Sorry. Does it show it in the window? No. You don't even see it in the window? Then, I want it to connect directly. Then the, it does not say that you have anything to add, any projects to import. And you're clicked on the Google Play Services list yes. all the way down over here? Yes. yes. Yeah. It says that no projects are found to import. Then I would almost say there's a bug. It's not the best tool, and it's not the most reliable service. So I would almost say that um, you're probably going to be one of the people that can't get it to work. <laughs> so unfortunately. If you missed my diatribe in the beginning, I mentioned that you don't actually have to get this to work for the assignments. Because I tried it. I spent maybe almost about three hours trying to get it to work. And I, st I was able to get it to work one time on an emulator. It worked, and then it crashed when I went to go refresh the screen to do something. And uh, I have yet to see it work on an emulator. Uh, and I have yet to see it work on the device. And uh, I was able to install everything as well. So I was really, you know, it's, it's um, compare this to the uh, other features of the Android. This is probably the worst upgraded, worst implementation they could ever possibly have done. The older map key worked flawlessly for me for years. Probably do. Maybe you have to update the SDK. Yeah. 
it's possible. Um, it's possible if you have an upgrade, if it says upgrade on it. Yeah, but I yeah. Uh, well, for why it's not showing up, couldn't really tell you outside the fact that it's probably a bug. It's probably a bug in the feature. You probably have to reboot your system after you upgrade. Ah, maybe try that. Uh, if you've upgraded it, you added the service, reboot the computer perhaps. So, It's working for you? How did you get it to work? Uh, I downloaded it last time and then I, I did restart it. Okay, very good, very good, okay. Rebooting it? What, what could be the reason? Rebooting? Yeah. <laughs> Reboot the system, maybe try that. If you just, or upgrade. If if you have an update, here's what happens sometimes with those updates. In this SDK, if you don't select the update, it erases what was there before. Because you didn't update it. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's not my most favorite feature, by the way. If you haven't noticed this. All right, so if you could possibly bring it in, then do it. And so what you're going to do is you're going to click this, and you're going to get a project that's going to be imported. So you're going to add the dependency to the Google Play services into your project. How are you going to do that? Well, this is a separate step. Once you do this, you're going to have it imported, and you're going to see something over here that's going to say, uh, this is what it looks like over here, actually. Google Play services lib. I've imported the project. Here's why mine's not working. I have it set for 2.2, which is on my emulator device. Although I have Google Play Services installed on my 2.2 Galaxy Tab tablet, it still doesn't work. <laughs> Although it was kind of a hack to get the Google Play Services to install correctly on that. So that's probably why it's not working. But let's just pretend like it does work. <laughs> so we're going to add the dependency to the Google Play Services into your project. So in your project, folder. You go to properties Android add, excuse me, add property Android library and then add the Google Play services lib. So you're going to bring up this screen here. So inside the project we just created, that blank one we just created over here, we called it uh, maps2. I'm going to click on project properties Android. Uh, let's see, we have the Android tab create it here. Let's take a look here and let me make sure my instructions are correct. Uh, Android properties, Android library, add. So Android here, uh, resources, library, add. Down here on the bottom of the screen, which means we have to scroll to the bottom. Right down here, add. And then we're going to add in the Google Play services if you see it. So Google Play Services is already added to my project list, and make sure it's opened up. If it's not opened up, it won't add correctly either. So go ahead and press OK to add it in, and you see a little green arrow that says, OK, we're good. We just added this library services to the project. So if you have it on here, I actually have it added to the finished product here, Map2 Demo, which was uh, I built earlier. So you can add it to as many projects as you want. I just go ahead and press the apply and I pressed OK. So now over here I've got it added and uh, can't really tell that anything has happened with this. Um, so let me go back over to here and see what else I want to do. So now we're going to update the uh, main Java activity to extend fragment activity instead of activity because we're going to use a different we're going to use a different approach to the app to the app um, development here. And we're going to check that the Google Play services is available on the device at runtime to protect against any error cases by adding the following line of code to the onCreate method. So what this will do is generate a message that will come out and say, hey, there's no Google Play installed on this device. So at the worst case scenario, you should be able to get that message to show up, meaning that your APIs are working, but maybe your API key is not working, which we haven't gone to yet. <laughs> so. Wait until you see how you get a new API key. <laughs> it's like 20 times more complicated than the um, than the last uh, than the last version of this. So, actually, I'm just going to type the word fragment in front of activity in my project. So, go ahead and open up the main activity of your map project that you created. Go ahead and click on main activity Java, and instead of activity, you want fragment 
fragments. Activity, is it fragment or fragments? Let's take a look here. Refresh my memory. It's fragment, singular activity, and then I'm going to have to import the library for it. It's fragment activity. And then if I hover my mouse over, it says import fragment activity. Yes. And that will fix any problems that you have. So up here I have the import done for me. The um, API version 4 app fragment. If you don't have a four point something, that's not going to work. So you have to have a four point or above. That's why I said use the most current if you can or something that will run on your computer of the four or above range. Um, because that's where that's coming from. All right, so once we have that done, then we can add this line of code in here. And the line of code that we're going to have is going to check to make sure that the Google Play Services utility is actually running. And then what's it going to check for? It's going to check it on the phone itself or the device that you're running on. So if Google Play Services is not, this is the other reason why it may or may not be running for you. If you're not checking to see if Google Play Services is running, you go run your map. You say, oh, I got it working. Beautiful application. Perfect. And you go run it on the phone, and it doesn't work. Why is it not going to work? Well, because Google Play Services isn't installed on the phone. <laughs> so you have to make sure Google Play Services is installed on the phone. So this is the cheat sheet way of saying, well, let's make sure by checking on the first thing we're going to do when that on create activity loads up is we're going to see and make sure it's running. So after we set the context view and everything, we're going to paste this in here. And now we're going to say, well, let's see if this is working. And then the cheat sheet way of adding the libraries is just highlight your mouse over the squiggly thing. It says import Google Play Services utility. Sure, why not? And then over here, we're going to have to import another one. Uh, whoops. What is this? Make sure the cut and paste works for us. There we go. We don't have to import another one. Google Play Services is enough. So that line of code should work once you've imported uh, as well. Uh, the import line. Oh, here it is up here. Uh, Google, Android, GMS, Common, Google Play Services U Utility. Uh, so once we have that in there, we can say, is Google Play Services available? And then you'll get a little prompt. The user will get a little prompt. This should actually work. If you load this right now on your device, this project should at least prompt you if Google Play Services is not available. Um, in fact, it'll do it. Um, well, let's see. It won't run. It probably will not run on my emulator. But let's just see real quick. I'm kind of curious. It's not going to run on my VirtualBox emulator. But I won't be so pessimistic. Let's see if it actually at least will identify Google Play services. Oops, let's just do a run as here. Oh, here we go. We got it. Uh, so let's see what happens here. Uh, I'm running this on my VirtualBox emulator to see what's going to happen. And it's not going to detect anything on my emulator. It should come back and say, is Google Play Services running? Hey, Google Play Services is not running and this app requires it. Please install it now. But it's not going to work on my emulator. Which is interesting because my emulator doesn't support the 4.x my emulator is a 2.3. So this is like one of the, and that's a good demonstration here of how difficult this is to troubleshoot. <laughs> no error, nothing. I don't even get the little prompt that says, hey, Google, it's not installed. Correct, but I don't have it installed. I don't have it, I don't have it installed on this emulator, and it's not telling me anything. So what it's supposed to do is check to see, well, maybe it is actually, maybe I did install it. Let's just see. Uh, you should see Google Play Services as uh, one of the uh, actions on here. If you put it on a real device, it will actually work on my other. It works on my 2.3 Android, and that's how I got Google Play Services to install on it. But it, I was tricking it to make it think it was like a 4. Point something, but it's really a legacy 2. Point something emulator uh, device, Android device. Um, so you can get Google Play Services installed on it. Um, I don't actually have it installed. So, oh, Google View. Good View. No, that's Good View. I thought that was Google for a minute there. No, no. All right, so that line of code, though, will hopefully check on the device 
if uh, if it's installed and tell the user you need to install it, which is a way you can get the user to actually install the services that's needed for the tools that are going to be used in the app. So it's not a bad practice to put that in there, even if if it's just for your device, you know you have it installed. But it's better than putting like a little message up on the top that says, "Install Google Play services." Who's going to read that? You know. So if you put this in here, then uh, you're guaranteed the user is probably going to install it. Now we're going to update the layout here to replace the entire contents with the following code segments. Well, this is going to essentially load our app here. Um, so we're going to have a fragment support the map fragment, which is the fragment activity that we extended from. And uh, we have an opening and a closing fragment here. So we're going to update it, replace the entire contents with this content. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to have to create a map key for this as well. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to close the main activity. I'm pretty much done with that one right now. And I'm going to go down to the layouts. Uh, let's see. Bin, excuse me, uh, resource folder. And go into my layout. Main activity layout. And instead of this relative uh, layout that's in here, I'm just going to remove it. Let's see if my cut and pasting works. It's not too much to cut and paste. What is that code again? Uh, alternate something? F10 or something? Control Shift F. No, Control Shift F. Yeah. Uh, to reformat it. So. And now you can see I'm using the uh, class, the common Android GMS maps support fragment, map fragment, and I've made the activity extend this. So the activity is going to be able to load and work with this interface as that is of the same type. So essentially what I've done is, and we, we covered this last time actually, last weekend. Um, so the activity type is matching the interface type and the onCreate is working with it. So go ahead and save it. And once it's saved, then um, we can go on to the next step, which was the dreaded map key, which is coming up. So the map is controlled through the Google Maps object. So we use the find fragment by ID in the onCreate uh, to keep the reference to the Google Map from the layout. So we're going to add the following line of code to the onCreate method. So we're going to create this object, which is going to be a Google Map map. We're going to create the map for us. And it's going to be a get support fragment manager, which is what we just loaded up there in our UI. Dot find fragment by ID, and then we have the r dot ID map get map because we changed the UI type. So this is actually I'm going to copy and paste and put this in my on create method. So this is the other piece of that you're going to need to communicate back and forth with the map that we put on the layout. So I'm going to go back to the on create method here of the source code. So back into main activity.java. And uh, the reason why I can't paste it is just only a couple lines of code here. So Google Map, if I put my highlight, the thing is I have to import Google Map, so I'm going to go ahead and import the Google Map. If I import the Google Map, I'm also going to have to import the support map fragment. So I'm going to do this here. And then all of my um, messages have gone away. And just like I did before with the context, set context view to r.layout, and then how you implode and you bring in stuff from the resource, this is what we're doing here. We're communicating with the map that we're going to, and we added the map because we made the type of that resource, we made it into a Google map by using the, the custom class. So when I cut and paste and I put that in there, we're using the um, this guy up here with a fragment, so fragment map. So, um, so let's see. Now it's I'm hearing myself over and over again. This is gonna tell me I'm not doing anything with it. Yes, I know I haven't done anything with it yet. But what I'm doing is programmatically getting at the map object component that we put in the layouts. So let's go back over here. And now we're gonna have to do this extra key here. So. To use the Google Map API, this is so this is actually the easiest part, believe it or not. Uh, but it's probably the most confusing as well. Um, so you have to go to uh, code.google.com in the console. Uh, you need to log in to your Google account. So you need a Google account for this. And I've put the screens up here so you can see what I'm talking about. And I can probably log into mine actually. So let's just 
I'm going to cut and paste this here just to test it out. And uh, put it in here. Hopefully I have internet access. It looks pretty good so far. I'm going to log in. Actually, I can't use this Google account. I have to use the other one. I have multiple Google accounts. I believe I'm going to sign out and sign in under beanhecker at itu.edu, which is the account I used for this. I'm going to sign in. And I'm going to be taking in this, what is it? Yes. So I have projects that I've added to use the um, API key that I've created. I can see over here I've got the service. This is no known issues. Yes, I have many issues with this, but there's no known issues according to Google. The Google Maps uh, API version number two. All right, so how, am I, how did I get there? Well, so it requires that you have a Google account, first of all. Most people do. So any Google account will work for this. Um, but make sure you remember which Google account you're using if you have more than one. You want to click on the uh, Create Project if you see this button here. So I've done this before. If you first time you log in, you're going to get this screen down here. And you're going to have to create a project. So I actually got brought into the project that I had created pre previously. So once you create the project, in the services, you're going to enable Google Maps Android API version 2 and agree to the terms. So you haven't really seen anything here yet until you go into the services right here on the right hand side. Excuse me, left hand side. I click on services. This is it was automatically brought to my project that opened up. Once you create the project, you'll see something very similar to this on your screen, I hope. And uh, if you go down here, you'll see that I've got Google Map API on. So this is the same interface, which is probably the reason why they did it this way. It's the same inter interface for all of the other Google services. So we have other stuff in here, like cloud storage and stuff um, that I don't have turned on. Um, other Google services that you could possibly sign up for. Uh, but the one that you want to turn on, it's free, is the Google Maps Android. So once you've turned that one on, we're, uh, let's see, so we're further down here. Turn that one on. So what you're going to do in the left-hand part over here, you're also going to click on the API access. So you have to get what's called a key. Uh, for this as well. And you're going to stick the key in the manifest. So the key is kind of a crucial part of this. If you don't get the key right, which this is, you know, demonstrating why all of these steps, if you don't get one thing right, the whole thing's not going to work for you. <laughs> so, and you'll be lucky if it does, even if you get all the steps right. So, uh, next, after you have turned on the services, what you're going to do then is also get uh, click on the API key access. So over here on the right-hand side, over here, it says API access. And then if you've got some keys created already, which I do, um, I see over here I have an API key here with uh, me, me, yes. One of them is for Android APIs, and one of them is for, uh, well, I'm not quite sure. Oh, here it is, map to demo. That's the other project. So I have this new project that I just created. So I'm going to need to add, which is kind of ridiculous. I'm going to need to create another API key for this new project that I've created. So if you change anything about the properties of the project, start all over again. <laughs> Delete the key that you created. If you've changed anything about the path, where you put it on your disk, on your hard drive, anything changes, go ahead and create a new API key for it. And don't reuse the same API key in multiple projects because it automatically disables the API key. So it's just, you know, it's not my, fo my not my most favorite tool. All right, so let's go back to the instructions here. If you click on the API key access, you're going to click on create a new Android key. So the simple API key looks like this. And uh, if you create a, create a new Android key on the menu on the bottom here, I go back to my interface. I'm just going to create a new one here. Create a new Android key. And I get a little pop-up window that shows up. So I'm going to add another entry because every app that I create is going to need a new key for it. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to use something that's going to be on my computer from the key store. If you read the instructions right here, you can see it. What you have to do is you have to cut and paste a fingerprint 
that you're getting from your computer, which is using a key store tool. So if you read the instructions, just type in a key tool, minus list, V, keystone, keystone, whatever. And uh, depending upon where you've got it, you're going to get something that looks like this down here on the bottom. And then you're going to have to put a semicolon in there, and then you're going to have to put the, the name of the path that's associated with your app. So what does all that mean? You have to generate an SH1, SHA1 of the debug certificate using the key tool. So once you run the key tool, you cut and paste what you get from the terminal prompt or from the DOS prompt and you stick it into the window. <laughs> what does that look like? Well, let me just do it live for you because I need to cut and paste it anyway. So I'm going to open up my uh, terminal window. And uh, there it is, key tool. So again, you have to get the correct, you can see I have this in the uh, .android directory. So it's an invisible folder dot android where I've got the debug keystone which is where it's running from this particular path. The squiggly line says my current path but I have it right off of user bhecker which is this current path. So if you're on a Windows system you're gonna have to type in the Windows syntax for this and which is funny because they don't give it to you in the window on the Android Google Play. They, they assume you're on a Linux box or a MacBook. So if you run the command correctly, it comes back, it generates a key for you. So what I just, for a minute there, I just pressed uh, return. So I see my original MD5 and I see this one here that says SHA1. And then I have the signature, uh, the, the name of the algorithm, signature name, which is useless to me. This is the key I want right here though. So you have to run the key tool to generate the key to give to Google services so it can give you an app key. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so, however, this is the same same process as the first version of this tool, but it didn't use Google services. So the, really the only thing that changed is the way you're getting the API key and the import, as we did previously, of the Google Play services into the project. Um, so once you've generated the key, then you're going to, I'm going to just copy this key here. because I'm going to make a new one here out because I made a new project. So you have this information here, and in the resulting dialog, you have this one here, and this one's going to be different. This is going to be my same key, actually, because it's only the same key over and over again. So if you save the key, you don't have to keep running the key tool. Just put in a text file and say, hey, this is my, this is my key. It's calculated from your computer, so if you switch computers and you use the key from a different computer, you're going to have a problem with that. Uh, because, And one of the things I'm going to check to see if you've actually, um, well, I shouldn't say that. I used to check it, and it was amazing how many how much plagiarism we had with people using the same key. And I'm wondering where did this key come from. And five people turn in the same project with the same key, and you're like, like yeah, yeah, you really did it yourself, yeah, yeah. And then one guy says, well, you know, we all shared a computer. I said, you did, did you? And then the old API, you can actually look at the key and reverse it back to see the imprint of the computer. And it's like somebody else's computer from some guy on the internet, so you can tell from the key where the computer came from. And I'm like, wow, do you know this guy in London? <laughs> how, do you, how do you guys know all this guy? You know, everybody knows this guy? Oh, because he posted some blog with some example on it that had some key that he used. So now a lot of people, they actually X out the key. It doesn't really matter, but you know what? The, the key, don't put it, don't post it because the key, and I'm recording this right now too. They, well, my keys, it's, it's my computer. It doesn't really matter. It gives out information on the machine, the architecture. It, 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 it can use it for reverse lookup for crap, but there's nothing important on this computer. It's a teaching computer. I don't really care. It's not on my corporate network or anything like that. So I'm not really concerned about the security, but it is a slight security issue if you know what to do with it. So, so now what I'm going to do, I've cut and pasted this key. I have to include, I'm going to put it in the window here, as you can see. And then I'm going to generate the key automatically for the project that I'm going to use. And what I want to get out of this is the API key. So I'm going to go back to this window up here. And I'm going to paste what I just put in right here, but I'm not done yet, so I'm not pressing return. I'm going to put a semicolon in here, and then I'm going to add the path for my projects. My project out here 
up here, here's the package path right here, actually. I'm just going to cut and paste this in, or copy and paste it. So I put it at edu, itu, my maps is my, is my package path, my package information. Because this is what it's going to use when it authenticates. So it uses the internet, goes out to the internet, finds the key, verifies the key from the app that I created using this package name. And says, okay, this is good. Because if you get the package wrong, which is the other thing you get when you download other people's examples and it has somebody else's package name on it, it doesn't work. Change the package is not going to work. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm going to back to the internet here, and I'm going to paste this one in here. And it looks like I might actually be done with this. Let's, let's take a look here. So you want to add the uh, the full package to the bottom of it, and then you can press create. And once it's added, you should see it added to the list. So I'm going to go ahead and press create. And now in a few minutes, I've got it added to my list. So now I have three of them on here. I have this old one I did for my maps. Oh, here it is. It's on the top. My maps is the new one I just did. Maps to demo. And I don't remember what this one was. Uh, but uh, I can see now I have three keys generated here. And at the top, I see API key. This API key is different from this API key. And these are two different map projects that I've created. So this is the API key that I'm doing this for. Because I'm going to take that one and tell the manifest, hey, this is my API key. Because the manifest is a traffic guard who's going let to it, let it go out to the internet, go into Google Play, Google services, verify that this key is correct. Why are we doing all of this stuff? is to make sure that the map is authorized to be used. So, now I don't, maybe I'm missing the boat on the reasons why you actually have to use an API key for this, but we'll see. If you have a debug and uh, production keys and add them in, we're just going to, you can have two separate keys for it, one for the production release, one for the debug release. You have to create two separate keys for it. We're only going to use one for debug right now, right now. If you were releasing this, you might use a different key. So your new API key always starts out and looks like this here. It says AI something on the top of it. So now you're going to add the following tag to the Android manifest just before the closing application tag. And this is going to be the API key that you're going to download. You're going to copy, <laughs> copy and paste. So I'm going to take this code here and just replace your API key with the API key that I have here. And so uh, if I come back to my project, and I close this window here, let me just say yes, save the changes. I'm going to open up my manifest file. And in the manifest, I'm going to click on the XML stuff here. And right before the closing application tag down here, it doesn't really matter where you put it, actually. I'm going to add my API key. And I'm going to replace where it says your API key with my API key. And my API key <coughs> oops, is out here. So I'm going to copy it here. And put it in between the parentheses here. And let's see what happens if I save it. We're good. I do have, uh, let's see what here it says, uh, not tested. Uh, that's okay. So you shouldn't get any error messages. And each key is going to be different. You can't use somebody else's key on your computer. It doesn't match your key. To, it doesn't match your footprint of your computer. Which prevents you from running people's map programs, essentially. Or from using your map program elsewhere. So. All right. So now, uh, the ones that we have added the key, we're actually now able to authenticate with Google services to use the maps. So now your map is also going to need to have some permissions added to it. So the app also now needs the following permissions to the Android manifest file. We need the permission for your package name permissions to maps receive. So you have to fill in your package name also um, here. And then uh, protection level signature. Yeah, we're signing it with the app key with the API key that we've created. And then also the permission here uh, for the uh, internet, to use the internet. 
and then uh, to write external sources so we can write information if we want to write information. Um, what are we going to do there? Maybe some locations, maybe where the user clicked on it. We don't necessarily need to write external stuff uh, depending upon what we're doing with this program. Uh, read GPS services or graphic map services as well. Optionally you can add one or both of the following permissions. The access course location or the access find location. Those are kind of optional. Depends on how much scrolling you're going to do on the map in terms of the, from a high level view to a low level street view on the map. Depends on what kind of features you're going to put into the map. So I hear some banging in the hallway. So <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go back up here because um, I don't trust my uh, I don't trust my cutting and pasting. So I'm going to go back up to my map demo up here. Click on my Android manifest. Come down to the bottom of it here. So now I, I put the map key in there, right? So I'm just going to cut and paste this stuff here and stick it in. Because I'm cutting and pasting it out of here so that it will uh, cut and paste correctly. You can cut and paste it or type it in out of the PDF file. But I've had some issues cutting and pasting, so I figured I'll just do it this way. So now I'm going back to this manifest here, and I'm going to add these guys in. I'm putting this underneath the application at the end before the close of the manifest. So right there, it's, it's easier for me to find it if I put it at the end, actually. I do have to change the path because this one's a different path. This one is um, called uh, My Maps, I believe. Uh, yes, My Maps. My Maps. Mm -hmm. uh, what is this down here? <coughs> mm, it's okay. I'll just leave it alone. You can also add the permissions if you like to do it. You can actually add them through the permissions uh, screen as well. Use the GUI to actually add them in if you'd like to do it that way. I'm going to go ahead and save this one. And uh, this one here has issues, so I'm going to go ahead and close the project here because I uh, don't necessarily need that one anymore. Okay, so once you've changed the positions here, the last bit of line that I, I, uh, I looked at uh, is to add the OpenGL support to it as well. I just pasted that one in as well, although I didn't uh, talk about it yet. Um, so the Maps 2 uses an OpenGL uh, for the graphic part of it, so which is from the from the activity that we changed. So following and using the following features required for this particular way of doing it. If you're not going to do it this way, you're going to use a map view. You're going to have a slightly different implementation of this. And this is just showing you a kind of a non mm, non common but usually easier way of doing it. So use this feature here, OpenGL, and uh, the version number to use OpenGL. So test your application and check the log catalog output for any errors. If you're trying to work out some of the, uh, you know, if it's working, try out to use some of the Google Map options. One of the Google Map options that you can do, you're going to put these here. You can put these in your um, onCreate method, which is going to go mmap set map type to Google Map satellite, add marker. What we've done so far, however, should bring up the map if it's going to work. So rather than going through and coding the rest of the application, what normally what people do at this point is see if it works. So it's not going to work for me though because um, if I run this, and this, I'm so pessimistic, I'm running it on a 2.3 emulator. So I'm actually kind of curious to see if it will bring out any error message to the DDMS. Actually I'm going to, should open up the log, log cat. Emulator without GPU uh, emulation detected. <laughs> it's using OpenGL. So this app won't run without Google Play services. That's that line of code that I stuck in the onCreate method. Now it's actually working because I'm actually using the map, um, which is missing from your iPhone. Get Google Play services. Well, I can't install that on here. It's not going to. It's not compatible with this emulator version. Um, so it's not going to work. So. If this is working, it means it actually went out, found the app key, authenticated everything, tried to load the map, but then it said, hey, you know what? You don't have Google services playing. 
if you don't get this, there's something theoretically wrong with your code. This is what I would expect to get. It's not going to work on my emulator. <laughs> so if you've gotten this far, your map is working. It's just your device is not supported, Google Play is not installed, or Google Play services is not installed, but your key is working, your map is working, everything is working. Which is the most unsatisfactory results I've ever seen out of a map program. If I load this on my device, I get the same problem because I don't, I, if I load it on a 3.0 device, I have the same results. I was able to borrow somebody's 4.0 or something like that, 4.0, it was a brand new Android, and it worked. Yeah. yeah, it should work on your device. If you have, but yours is what, a 4 point something? Yeah, it doesn't work on the 3 point devices. Yeah, so if you do that, you're gonna see a map, actually. If you see the map, oh, that's great. I'm glad someone in here can actually see it. <laughs> if not, if you if you see this, did you get this part and install it from here? Ah, so you will probably see a bunch of boxes, like a grid. If you see the grid, it can't load the map because your graphic processor can't process the information. It, it, you have the grid and the map, yeah. you're in good shape. That's You actually have what you're supposed to have. <laughs> so now you can, if you get the grid with the map, you'll see a, like a fine, like an orange colored grid thing. Yeah. Let's see. With that. Actually, let me, let me just, because I'm kind of curious, let me install it on my thing here. I, I had it working at one point. This might actually work. So let's see. Did you get? That's exactly what you're supposed to get. Yeah. It looks like the U.S. <laughs> so let me, uh, I'll take a few minutes here to see if I can get it to work on mine because I have it compiling at least. It should, but uh, I tweaked this emulate, I tweaked this Samsung to impersonate a higher level API through a, well, after you, after you install a bunch of tweaking tools on it, you can tweak the API to impersonate. So I don't know, and I have Google Play services installed on it now too. So it might actually work, but we'll see. It's not going to work in my emulator though. Oops. Bin. Here it is here. So we know how to get it on the device, I hope, from last time and the time before. You just drag the APK file over onto the SDK, SD card. I'm waiting for my device to uh, pretend like it is going to communicate with me. <coughs> it takes a few minutes for the SD card on my device to actually... Oh, there we go. Disk inserted and reload. Okay. It'll take a few minutes for mine to load up. And um, so if it is if it is working on your device or on your emulator, the next step is to try these guys out. Uh, so mmap is going to be the same name, I believe, as we put in here on the project. Let me close this here. On the uh, main activity. Oops. There we go. Let's connect it. Uh, connected, okay. Hold on one moment. Tons of screens open now. Let's see. Wow, didn't know I had so much stuff open. So I'm going to drag the project over and stick it uh, on my SD card and install it on my phone to see if it actually works this time. It's probably not going to, but at least I can tell you what the error is going to be. And for those people who walked in late, as I mentioned before, I'm probably not going to be able to test your map. If you go through the motions, get the map key, put it together, try to implement the feature. If it doesn't work for you, don't stress about it. Because it's either going to be, you don't have the device, it's not going to work on the emulator, or you're going to have some sort of uh, other issue. Uh, and if that is the case, then it doesn't really matter. You've made an attempt, which is what you're going to uh, 
which are essentially going to be graded on. And it, if you make an attempt and it doesn't work, I'm not going to hold it against you. So it don't, doesn't matter if it works or not. So I've got mine on here. I've opened it up here now. It says when I've installed it on here, this is the install for the app program. You're going to see it's going to say your location, storage. I don't really necessarily need storage. Actually, that one probably could be pulled out. And network communication, which means you also have to have network access for the map program to work, which is another problem. If you're not connected to the Internet, don't have 3G service or something, your map's not going to work either. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and install it. I do have 3G service on this. so. Once I've installed my maps, installing, I'm going to go OK to run it. And, ah, I have the grid. And I have the map. This time, it worked. That's because uh, with over, the, over the last week and I tweaked this, it thinks it's a four point something device. It's not. It's a two, this is actually running on a 2.3 non-supported device. But I was determined to get it to work. <laughs> So there's some utilities out there where you can impersonate and tweak it. And once you impersonate it, then you can download the Google services. And then you can, but it's not what I'd call most reliable. It takes you way too long. If you're really interested in doing it, then I would uh, buy a more current device. But this is what you're supposed to get out of this. If you don't get this, then it's hard to proceed forward on the map stuff. Once you get this, all the other tutorials, all the other information you see on the internet works. Everything will work. It's just the map key stuff and the Google services that has changed. So, all right, so it does work. Uh, there's proof right there. <laughs> so let's see. I'm gonna leave that one alone for a second. The uh, rest of the tutorial was designed to get you that to work. So what you can do at this point then is add some stuff to the activities to um, set the location enable to true, add something in there. Uh, go to this go to this URL here and uh, let me show you what's out here, make sure this still works. Page not found. Excellent. Probably because it says here. There we go. Changing the view works with all of the different APIs. This stuff is different than a lot of, um, if you have a book, you're looking at Android maps on a book from the older API, is outdated. So if you go to this URL, you'll see, um, you know, moving locations, setting the target location. You can put an address in and say the map, you go to this address. So if you're doing like a restaurant app or something and you have a, an address for a longitude and latitude, you can use them both ways. You just, uh, you put that information in there attach it to a button or attach it to a, a list item that you're going to click on or something and it will tell the target location here it will set the location and then you'll end up getting automatically a little pin that will show up on the location to set it um, and then uh, setting you know different features of it I would use this as a resource because it's more up-to-date for the version um, there's another um, example that I stuck out on the website. I'm actually kind of curious to see if it's going to work. I believe, let me just make sure there's nothing left in here. Um, no, attribution requirements, testing. Here's, a, here's the picture of what it looks like before. Uh, here's the other thing. If you want to test with, you don't have a device, and you want to test with the emulators, so it's a good thing I did look at this. There was a little piece left here I needed to show you then you can actually load up and create an Android emulator so if I wanted to run this I could run this on my Google emulator so if I do a run as Android application here I think I already have it running so if I come down here and I click on this Google one after I've created it it'll run on the Google API services so the difference between let me go back to this window here uh, let's see. The differences between the standard emulators and the Google API emulator is this has Google services installed on it. Normally you can't install anything on the emulators. This is supposed to work. I have yet to see this work. So it is supposed to work on the emulators. It'll be interesting. I have never seen it work. They keep claiming, all the literature keeps claiming that it works on these emulators. Uh, I have yet to see it. So.
And nine times out of ten, it doesn't work on my device. It just happened to work right now, which is kind of lucky, actually. But uh, So I have another map project that was created. And let me go back out to the website so I can show you where it's at, unless I have it in here already. So I don't. Um, so I'm going to close this guy here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll close him. We'll leave him up for a second. And there's another map example that's uh, I call legacy. Remember before I uses the older API. You can convert the older API to the newer one just by changing the app key and by adding the the Google services. So once you've gotten the base <coughs> product set up, where you've got the Google Play services, what this tutorial is really good for actually, um, the one that we just went through was to see how to set up a brand new project, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to add it to the project. So once you've, um, if you come back to the beginning of here, you can take an existing map project that you've found on the internet or you've found on my website, and I'll show you one in a few minutes here. You can change the project uh, to use the Google Play services. You don't need to load this in again. Once you've got this loaded in, you just leave it in. So you probably can come up to this point here, and then you add the dependency to your project. So you're going to add the property, the dependency of the Google Play Services lib into the project, and then change the API key to your API key, and you should have a working map program. So let me show you an example here. Um, if I can find this example, which actually it probably is already downloaded, but let me just go in here. So out in, uh, let's see, could be in the tutorials at the top. I believe I moved it. Let me just make sure here. No, that's map version 2. Okay, the one on version 2, if you want the solution to this project, you'll have a working project here. You just have to change the map key to your Google API map key. If you can't get it to work, that's another solution for you. The other one, I believe, is going to be in the lecture folder, but let me just take a look here. Uh, let's see. Yep, maps, projects, and examples. So this one is in the supplemental notes. This is the older one that I was mentioning before. If I download API maps examples, and I come back over and take a look. To, uh, let's see, this one's done. It's an older project. That uh, here it is. Here, this one actually still might work because it's uh, Google Maps, Maps Demo, and Show Map. That's going to come along with this PDF file. Uh, this this file that's in here, if you download this example and unzip it, it's going to be the old way. Before Google Play Services, it's going to be the old way of getting it, but the rest of it is actually the same. So you just convert, uh, you use a different API key that you've created through Google Services, add it to the manifest the same way, set the same permissions, but then add the dependency to that Google Services project. And this example will work the same as uh, it does here. If we take a look at this example, in fact, let me just load it up into Eclipse real quick. Now let me close this guy here. There we go. So file import. It's, I believe it's on my desktop. An existing. There we go. I'm just going to import all these guys in here, and uh, click on finish. Google Maps. Uh, let's take a look here. It's using an old API, which is not installed yet which is interesting. So let me change. So here's another um, interesting thing. If we take a look, same thing happened actually with the database demo that we did last time. And so it's using an Android 1.5. It's a very old example, even though this example is maybe almost a year old, maybe two years old. Actually, this probably is probably about two years old at this point. If I go into Project Properties, if I click on the project itself, go into Project Properties, I can see that I've, I've got an issue here. 
with the API. So if I'm going to change it, I don't need to change it anyway. I'm going to put it at, uh, oh, let's put it at four point something because that seems to work for me. We'll put it way up here. Then I'll press uh, apply. Okay. I can see, well, then now I have a problem here. So let's take a look here. Uh, uh, it's using an old, okay, so this one here, I don't believe these examples are going to work for you because we're using older APIs that are no longer supported. If you would go back and install the 1.5 APIs, it probably will work for you, but I don't want to waste the time to do it. So don't bother with these. Instead, look for the more current ones on the um, Android de developer website. It's going to be a better resource for you. So. All right, so if you can get the maps to work, you're halfway there, three quarters of the way there, and then what you're going to do is implement everything that you've been doing so far. So it's just a matter of changing the location on the map. And, uh, definitely use that resource link that I put here on the bottom. This is definitely going to show you um, all of the uh, features that are associated with uh, setting it. And you can play around with some of these features here. And this will set some of the views and add a marker to the map. And add a marker on a position on a latitude and a longitude. So title it marker. I could, uh, well here, we'll just do this. We can experiment with a new latitude, new longitude here by going back. Let me open up that project again. Let me just delete these out. So there's no confusion here. I'll just try something real quick before I leave you with this. Mm -hmm. Get rid of this guy too. What was it called? My Maps, I think. <coughs> so let me show you something nifty, which is all you really have to do for the one of the assignments for the restaurant one, I think it is. This is also like mark locations, mm -hmm. I believe. So you can hard set the information with the <coughs> longitude and the latitude. Let me show you that real quick. So now that I have the, this part of it done, I'm pasting in. I have to fix this because it's bulleted points that I'm pasting in here. If I created an instance of the map, what I would be doing here, and this is not going to, this isn't going to, there we go. Longi latitude, longitude is what this means here. This is the reason why I want to show you this. This puts a marker, we'll put a marker symbol, which is like one of those little pin things on the map. And um, it'll put it up there. Um, we need to create that local variable. So we create the local variable for the map itself, Google Map Maps, and then in here we can import map or options, marker options. So the code is not exactly what I would call um, import latitude, longitude, not exactly 100%. Uh, what do we got here? Initialize the variable. All right, well it's actually going to be equal to the map, actually Google Map Map. Find map. This is we already have this one here. We'll just change this guy here to map. We already have that variable set. So this is the uh, revised code that you're going to want to use instead of what's in the what's in there if you want to make this work. Actually, for the longitude and latitude, we can actually use this tool. We can go out here to the internet. This is the best way I would do it. Actually, is stick an address in. So you have, let's say, you put. Um, the uh, concept was to show you on a map where these restaurants are or something like that nature or where this is on a map. So here you can go uh, longitude, latitude, or latitude. Um, of a point, so let's see. No, there's a map. I can't remember the, uh, I should have bookmarked the URL. Find my location, longitude and latitude. Ah, here it is. Actually, this one will work. Any one of these here. So if I go, where am I right now? I'm at uh, uh, 355. <laughs> uh, where were we? San, uh, San Fernando. Fernando uh, Street. Oh, West San Fernando. Let's see. I'm like, where am I? West San Fernando. Uh, San Jose. California. Something. Let's see. That's it. We'll just take it. Uh, let's see. Here it is. So these are our two numbers that we're going to stick in there. So 37. Dot, let's see. So 
So we would stick these guys in here. Longitude, latitude number is going to be a three seven dot three three one eight uh, one nine. And then this one's going to be uh, what negative one twenty one point nine eight nine. Uh, that's all right. Doesn't really matter. It does actually, but eight nine <laughs> five. Seven six nine, and if I run it here, actually, I have to run it though this way. I have to run it to actually create the. Uh, let me just make sure this is going to work. Set my location. True. Very good. So I have to run it to create the uh, the bin, the APK file. So. And then let me put this guy back on. So it's not going to show it to me. It's not going to show it on here. It's going to give me the same message I had before. Actually, bombed out. I think uh, Android runtime activity thread performing. Yes. All right. So if I take it and copy this guy over, it should take me to the. It should show me essentially this location with this little red thing. Well, we'll see what happens. I don't know if that actually compiled, but we'll see, because I have an interesting log message down here. <coughs> Did I lose connectivity with my... Oh, I didn't do this, is what happened. Google Play Store is missing. Yes, I know. Google Play Store is missing. Yes. Okay, so let me just copy it real quick over. <coughs> okay, connect it. <coughs> All right, so here's the uh, here's the device I'm going to run it on, and then uh, get rid of these guys here because these are old ones. I'm going to install it on top of what's already there. So I'm just going to drag this guy over here, put him on here. Perfect. Now I should see the ITU location on the map instead of the 3,000 feet above ITU or America kind of looking thing. Uh, so let's see. I need to reinstall it, however. So I'm going to go here, reinstall. So reinstall the app after you've uh, copied it over. Oh, interesting look. Now I have a blue ocean kind of thing. Uh, maybe because of one of the settings, I definitely uh, did not do this correctly. So at least I know it's a difference, however. I've got a different I'm level of granularity. I need to change the view. Yeah, I have satellite view. That's what the problem is. So if I take this uh, off here, let's see. Uh, get the satellite view off of there. That's I have the satellite view on here, so now I can see the ocean and stuff. <laughs> so I used the features in the wrong combination, obviously, here. Although the satellite view looks pretty interesting. I wonder if I zoom in enough, if I wait long enough. No, I'm not going to see the coarse granularity on there. So Anyway, you can possibly see what you can do with this by using the right uh, settings. So... It should show, yeah, it should still show up, but I think it's trying to load it is what it's doing. So, although you can see I have the the satellite view on here, it's taking too long. It keeps refreshing a little bit more, a little bit more, but it's using an internet connection, and uh, it's going to take forever to get to that point. <laughs> so I should be able to, let's see, I should be able to run it this way, actually. I'll try it one more time, and then we'll take a break. So and we'll move on to uh, threads next. But uh, let me just—I took off the uh, satellite view. So let's get this guy connected again. So unfortunately, I can't test it on the emulator, so you can see it. I have to wait for. Uh, I have to wait for this guy to work, but. Uh, and this guy's not going to want to. This guy's not going to want to connect right now. So we'll just um, assume that it will work, and it probably would. 
but I have to copy it over again and it doesn't want it to load right now. So, All right, so that was the tutorial on the mapping information for the purposes of your assignment. I would use a longitude and latitude and put in the restaurants. So you're putting in, where are you going to get that? You're going to hard set it. So you can probably keep it in a notepad or something or, I don't know, a text file or something. Keep the locations, record the longitude and latitude, show it on a map. So the user clicks on it, brings up a little map. And don't expect uh, extremely fast performance out of it. It's going to run a little bit slow because it's connecting to the internet using app services. You can't use that. Oh, here we go. Finally, does work. Let's see. If it, if it uh, you can't do it that way, then I, I would recommend using uh, a web view perhaps instead of a map view. And using you can do it through web services the same way instead of using a map. But the purpose of the assignment is not to make sure that you can actually troubleshoot it. The purpose of the assignment is to actually you know, get you familiar with and have you experiment with the map features. So it doesn't really matter. Just to reiterate the point one more time because I'm still getting people asking me this question. doesn't really matter if it works or not. <laughs> I can't test it anyway. <laughs> so, Well, actually, probably now I could test it, but I'm not going to. So not a big problem. Yeah, you can set them with variables, actually. Dynamically, you'd have to look at yet another API to do it, if you wanted to do it dynamically. I'm not recommending doing that, however. I'm recommending just hard setting them. Find the locations and then hard set. There is, a, there is an API that actually will get the longitude and latitude for you. It goes out to the internet, does something very similar to what I just did manually, and will return those two things for you. So get longitude latitude from a particular address and just put the address in there and it will translate it to uh, longitude latitude for you. But um, not really part of the assignment. You don't have to do it. You can hard, you can hard code it so, if you'd like. So. So. I, I can All right. So that is working. So we're the, if you don't want the satellite view, take the satellite view off and you'll get the little red pin that shows up. So I'm going to end this video here.